So next, we will want to add an event listener to our session to understand when the trigger button is pressed. We want to first start by setting up a listener for when the user enters XR. We do that also in start here. We just say WL on XR session start push for adding an object to a list. This on XR session start bind this. Bind this is important to ensure we can still use all the properties like overlapped grip, for example, inside the function that we bind. And now everything that's left to do is actually adding this function. We do that by just adding the function at the end. And this function receives the session that just started. And once the session started, we can add an event listener for the select event. And the select event is exactly the event that gets emitted when we press the trigger key, uh, trigger button. So we go ahead and again, this on trigger pressed bind this. To ensure we can continue to access all the variables. And we go ahead and define the appropriate function as a member function to our component. Now think of it this way. Select is basically a click, a mouse click, but in VR. What we really want is we want to understand when the button is held down and then when it gets released again. So what we're gonna do is instead of just using select here, we're gonna use select end and select start and call the handlers on trigger pressed and on trigger released. Just duplicate the function and therefore now have one that handles the trigger being pressed and one that handles the trigger being released. This event will get triggered for both controllers the same time. So if I hold down the right controller trigger it will trigger this function and the left controller trigger as well. Since we want to make a distinction between the right and the left controller, we need to make sure that the handedness of this component or this climbing mechanic is the same handedness as for the event that was just triggered. And to get the event, we just make sure to add a parameter here. And then to check the handedness, we can go ahead and check this if event dot XR input source um, handedness and then equals something, then we actually consume this event and otherwise we just drop it. Excuse me, it's uh, input source here. Event input source handedness. And now we can compare this to right and left. Next though, we will need to understand which handedness this component should be having. And that is something that we would go ahead and define through the editor. And to allow users or to allow yourself to configure parameters of this custom component, you just simply add the parameters at the top at, right after register component. So we're go gonna go ahead and call this handedness and make this a input parameter of type WL type enum, which will allow us to define a list of values, namely left and right, and set a default. In this case, we want left as the default. These values will get passed as integers into this component. So what we'll want to do is convert this integer back to the string that we have at the top. So we say this dot handedness is this handedness as index to a list, the same list that we have up here. 
And that now allows us to use this handedness down at the bottom. And we can say with a console log, we can just print you pressed the, and then use this handedness, trigger. And going back to the editor real quick, just to set this parameter up properly, we can select the left quest controller, check the climbing mechanic. We see we have handedness here now with a uh, drop down to select the values that we selected. For the left controller, left, the default is obviously correct. But for the right controller, we'll open climbing mechanic and select the right uh, value here. We save and package. Then we can now go ahead to our remote debugging console. Make sure to uh, reload this to also get rid of any old errors in the, con uh, in the console. And if we enter VR, that should set up our event listeners correctly. And if we press the trigger, you now see the console. And I'll make this a little bit bigger for you to more easily see. You press the left trigger, and I did indeed press the left trigger. And if I press the right trigger, it did indeed press the right trigger. So left, right, left, right. Works flawlessly, wonderful. And if we hold down the left trigger, we only get this event once. Finally, going back to the code, we want to duplicate this if statement and just use released to print a message whenever the trigger was released again. So we can again go to the Oculus Quest and uh, keep our console output active. And if we now press and release, and you'll see everything reloaded automatically, it just from saving our JavaScript file, Wonderland Engine knew to reload the JavaScript files, rebundle them, reload the page, soft reloaded in this case. And we can now just, and I'll also show the controller here, hold and release the right trigger and hold and release the left trigger. And it will output the correct console messages in the process. So now that the input is set up correctly, we can use the input to hold on to one of the grips. And we're going to do that by just saving the held grip if the grip is currently overlapped. So by saying this held grip is this overlapped grip, the held grip will always get the overlapped grip. If there is no whole overlap grip, that's great because then the held grip will just stay null. Um, we also need to make sure to reset the grip whenever we let go of it. So we just set the grip here to null. Finally, we'll need to make sure to initialize this in init to make sure that any access leads to a good error. So now whenever we have a held grip, we want to make sure to move the player according to where this grip is. That means, first of all, we somehow need to access the player to begin with. So let's go ahead and just add a player parameter here up in the top. I'm sure that is of type WL type object. And the object parameters are always null by default. So we're going to leave that here. Now we can go to the editor select the right quest controller for example we see we now have a new input field for the player by using the object picker we can go ahead and select the player object and just do the same thing for the left controller as well now that the player is correctly positioned we can go ahead and save and return back to our code this way we don't forget about setting the parameters correctly if we already have the components attached to any objects finally if this held grip is not null then we will want to calculate the difference moved and translate the player accordingly now how do we get that difference? We get that difference by storing the original position that uh, we had when we gripped and then using that the new position 
of the controller to figure out how much we moved. The position of the controller, because this component is attached to the controller, is the position of this object, basically. So what we're going to do is we're going to first initialize some memory for the uh, position. And we're just going to call it this dot position, or let's say this gripped position. And we're going to make it a float32 array, which is going to hold three float values. That's just three numbers. And when we grip, we want to set this grip position to this object get. And we're going to use get translation world to use the world translation or the world position of this object. Now, when we release, we don't need to do anything here. But to get the difference, we will now need to do the same thing when we're currently gripping to something. So assume we have the grip here and we want to now get the new position. That means we're just going to add another one of these variables with the float32 array. And we're going to get the current position with the same function. Now, because GL matrix is bundled with Wonderland Engine, we can use the math library, the open source math library, GL matrix here. That means we can use GL matrix vec3 sub to subtract two vectors from each other. We're going to use the new position and subtract the old position, which is the gripped position. And the first parameter in GL matrix is always the output. So we're going to go ahead and store this in the grip position because we will no longer need this after, after the subtraction. And now grip position is basically our temporary variable. And because that gets pretty confusing pretty quickly, let's just add another temp uh, or diff vector here and make sure that the result gets stored in diff, just to make sure we don't get confused when reading this code, maybe a couple of weeks down the line. So now we have the difference. And since we have this difference, we now want to apply the difference to the player. So we go ahead and say this dot player, which is our player parameter that we defined at the top, uh, dot translate to translate it in uh, its local space, this dot diff, and that will uh, translate it by the difference. Now, because uh, this would then every frame translate the difference of the controller with the grip, uh, it would just probably drift off into the distance. So let's make sure that we store the new position uh, into the gripped position so that if the position changes again, it will get recalculated properly again. So all we need to do here is set this gripped position and you set to overwrite its contents with this new position. Now, if everything went well, and we basically one shot this, uh, we can go back to the Oculus Quest, reload this, go into the Quest, and I'm very, very uh, excited to see what's gonna happen. The likelihood of it being not exactly what we intended is gonna be very high. Now that it reloaded, we can go back into VR, and we now know if we overlap this and hold the trigger, it will start moving the player. So for those of you a little less resistant to motion sickness, might want to like take some distance, maybe hold the glasses and like, just see what happens because this could be doing completely different things than you expect. So holding this, we see, okay, it's just drifting us away, which is kind of cool. It feels like flying. It's nice, but it's not quite what we intended. And the problem in this case is uh, simply twofold. We have the subtraction inverted here. So if we switch the parameters here. And then finally, we do not need to set the grip position uh, in the end. Then if we switch back to the quest, we have this wall in front of us. Now we can grab and pull us up
So this concludes this little tutorial of implementing a climbing mechanic. In the future, we will have a tutorial that shows you how to use text and measure the time that you take from the bottom to the top. Uh, feel free to try that out for yourself until then. Otherwise, I hope this tutorial was able to show you a bit of Wonderland Engine scripting, how to use the editor, and generally how you would structure a Wonderland Engine project, optimize assets, and how to work with uh, the Oculus Quest. I wish you a lot of fun continuing WebXR development with the Oculus Quest and looking forward to what you build with Wonderland Engine.